بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد باب من عال جاريتين أو واحدة عن عقبة بن عامر رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من كان له ثلاث بنات وصبر عليهن وكساهن من جدته كن له حجابا من النار Continuing with the Al-Adab Al-Mukhrad by Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah The chapter is about the virtue of raising daughters and then later on we will have some chapters on raising the sisters and taking care of the sisters So basically As in many societies, people consider having daughters, having girls to be a virgin and many times girls are considered to be something that is not wanted but we had no choice. Whereas if we look in the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we will see that having daughters, raising daughters, in fact even sisters is a great virtuous ibadah is a rewarding act which is considered one of the greatest form of ibadah just like people try to find different forms of worshipping and different forms of having higher level of reward. This is one of those things that although many times even those of us who have girls, who have daughters, we don't consider it as a rewarding act, we don't take it from the point of view of ibadah, we take it as okay my children so I have to take care of my children ah, okay I have to buy them this I have to do this for them generally spending on the families on our children is a ibadah and it's one of the highest form of sadaqah and then when you take it to the second level which is even a higher form of ibadah and that is when you specify spending something for your daughters. Amazing. This becomes even a higher form of ibadah according to the Sharia. It's only we need to understand the value of it from the Sharia point of view. And it's at the same time, at a time when people consider Islam a religion that doesn't give women their rights and always looking down at women when we look at it from this angle when you look at the ahadith we realize that having daughters raising women taking care of women in our family is considered to be a great act of ibadah great form of worship and is part of religion, not just a tradition, not just part of being a family member. It's part of our deen. 
And as much as we will see the importance of raising our daughters and taking good care of them, and that is being form of ibadah, on the other hand, neglecting them because we see no benefit in raising children, in, in raising girls. She is not going to help me with my business. She is not going to be my supporter in future. What I'm going to get by having these girls? Well, now I got too many girls. <coughs> I don't need these many daughters. I needed a boy. Oh, once again, I got a daughter. And this is, the people consider that to be, well, Ayazu Billah, a form of curse. That okay, again, oh, I got a fourth one. Now I got a fifth daughter. The more we have, remember, the more daughters we have, the more rahmah and blessings we have. This is something that is decided by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, look at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. What did Allah choose for His Prophet? He has four daughters. None of his boys got to the age of puberty. In fact, they died at a very young age. But he has four daughters that he raised. And if you look at it in reality, most of the time, he is the one who raised his daughters. And with that, he is mentioning all the reward of raising the daughters and not considering them to be a burden, especially in a society where people consider having daughters to be a burden, to be a curse, to be an act of a shame that, you know, I have no face to show anyone anymore. I got a daughter. They used to hide their face from me. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man kana lahu thalathu bana, A person who has three daughters, wa sabara alayhinna, and he has patience with them. وَكَسَاهُنَّ مِنْ جِدَتِي And he clothed them from his wealth. Which means, you know, daughters, they like clothing. They like jewelry. This color, that color. And especially Rasulullah is mentioning that. وَكَسَاهُنَّ And he gives them the clothing according to, of course, his ability. Sharia never told us to go out of our limits but yeah according to his ability and according to his capacity he tries to give them some good clothing what will be the reward how many thousands of reward do we get or what do we expect that should we say he will get the reward of doing the about of 30 years 40 years the reward that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam have mentioned in this hadith is nothing comparing to the reward of having the reward of ibadah of 30 years, 80 years, 100 years. Nothing comparing to that is more than all of that. You know what is the reward? Kunna lahu hijaban min al -nar. There will be a protection for this person against Jahan. That's it. What more do you want? When a person who will have the reward of 1000 years ibadah, what is he going to do? Main thing is, you want to be protected against Jahannam and if you are protected against Jahannam then that's it, you are going to Jannah. In simple words, Jannah is guaranteed for raising three daughters. And now imagine a person who has one or two sons and he gets one daughter. That's it, my family is complete. I don't need no more children, let alone having just daughters. I don't need no more children. My family is complete. One boy, one girl, that's it. And if a person will get a second daughter after that, this is a problem. And now, if he gets a third one, now he starts having a problem in, the, in his family, with his family, with his wife. It's because of you. You are this. And you know, because you, you just, I just have daughters for you. They consider that woman to be a cursed woman that is only delivering girls. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us three things here. Sabara alayhimna. 
has sabr, patience with him. What is this sabr alayhim? Of course, we need sabr in raising the children. That's for sure. Every person needs sabr in raising the children. And this is why at a young age, really, we need to learn how to raise children. A forgotten topic in our culture. No one talks about this topic. Even when we study religion, we don't learn how to raise children. And especially the part of summer that having patience in raising children, something very important to learn. Especially for us. Most of our people, they get married at a younger age. At that age, generally people have no soul. This is the age when the person is just reacting to his emotions. Oh, this, oh, this. And now a child starts crying. Be quiet. Now it doesn't understand your language. Understand the words. Doesn't know what does that mean. I'm not going to keep crying. You do what I want. What I want. Get me what I want, otherwise I'll continue crying. And the child continues crying. I said, be quiet. And you know what comes after. See, we haven't learned the element of sabr in raising the children. And that affects the akhlaq, the morality, the future of our children in a great deal, in a great way. It really, in many situations, it would either make the person or destroy the person. Although it's out of topic, but since we're talking about it, one of the things where we, most of the time, we feel with raising the children is our expectations from our children. Expectations from our children. Before the child is born, in your mind, you have the president of the country. And you are going to have an angel that will come to your home. Just like someone once asked when he was counseling a person and he, he realized the person is expecting an angel in his home, which means the child to behave like an angel. And of course, parents generally expect that. So the person asked him, just tell me one thing. Did you ever see a devil, a, an angel being born to the devil's house? To a devil family? You are a devil. You expect your child to be an angel. If he is not a devil, that should be enough for you. You know, the person doesn't pray himself, doesn't behave himself, lies, cheats, does every haram, he smokes, he drinks, but he wants his child to be an angel. How are we going to fulfill these expectations? And Let's just not go to that extreme. Just take it to our level. In a normal situation, just the environment that we are living in, raising our children to be good human beings, good believers, practicing Muslims, is not easy. We all know. Any person living in the best country in the world, whatever that may be. And Alhamdulillah, we are living in one of the best countries you can find in the world. It could even be the best. If you ask any person what is the most challenging thing that you have in your life, it will be raising children. That's the greatest challenge you face, raising children in a proper Islamic environment, with a proper education, 
with the proper Iman and Akhlaq. It's the most challenging thing we face in our lives. Protecting our sons, protecting our daughters, protecting their Akhlaq, making sure that they don't learn bad things, they don't get into, let alone lying, cheating, misbehaving, no, into drugs, into crimes. Normal, normal thing in a good family. Go and see what is happening. These children from the college, from the school, from the high school, what is it that they're doing? It's only that most of them are not getting caught for what they're doing. Otherwise, their name will be listed for the rest of their life amongst the criminals. The amount of crime they commit by that age. And it's considered to be a normal thing. Why did you scratch that person's car? Why did you break that person's window? Why did you damage that person's property? You were just These are crimes that are considered to be normal games that they play and every young person has to do it in order to prove that I'm a man. I don't know how many of us understand the culture that we are living in. And then, for some reason, we expect our children to be like angels in spite of going into the same environment, having the same company, same friendship. People are, all of, all of those people are doing these things. But you talk to any of the parents that will tell you, not my children. No, my children don't. That is of course our expectations. But our environment does not allow our expectations to be fulfilled. So now, in that type of situation, when raising children is such a difficult task, now to raise our children with sabr on all of their behaviors, all of what they're doing, and making sure we educate them properly. We give them what they are supposed to be getting. It's not only about food. It's not about shelter. It's not about that education that will only be getting them food and shelter. This is generally what everyone worries about. When we talk about higher degrees, what is he going to do with this? Make money. He will make money. The other one will make more money. And the third one will make more than all. That's all our pride. This is all what we worry about. What education have we given them to make them true human beings? Now coming to religion, what education have we given them to make sure they are true believers? Sunday schools. Why don't we make them doctors, lawyers, architects in Sunday schools? They said, no, we can't. We won't be able to do it. Not all the Sunday schools. So you expect them to be at the level of Sahaba, Tabi'een, Ayman, Mushtahideen through Sunday schools. See, this is where there is a conflict. Either we haven't realized what our religion is all about. We think our religion is only for Sunday schools, for free times. And through that, you will get to the highest level of piety. Not too long ago, we were talking, we were having some discussion. And a brother said, but nowadays, you know, there are so many good TV programs. That when our children watch these programs, they get so much knowledge, so much information. I said, Alhamdulillah, that's very nice. I said, but I have one simple question to ask. Tell me one person, 
Show me one person that you can say that he became a very pious man because of sitting in front of the TV. Because he used to sit more in front of the TV, so he is a very pious man now. Just show me one person that became muttaqi of the sulaha through the company of TV. Because he watches more TV. This is where we are deceiving ourselves. Subhanallah. See how Allah is telling us. Don't let the word in life deceive you. Don't let the word in life deceive you. This is all deception. Al-Gharur, the one who is always deceiving, whose work is to deceive people. Never let him deceive you. These are all his tricks. So, so, on raising the children, making sure that when we are raising our children, we learn how to deal with them, how to take care of them. As I said, being at a young age when you don't have control over your soul and you want everyone to listen to you and just behave and do what you want and your children to be according to your expectations and then you don't see it. You get furious and upset and want to beat them up. And especially Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his daughters, he says, Wa sabara alayhim, have sabara. Have a lot of really children in general and our daughters, especially. They need a lot of sabara. Sometimes sabara is not only when they misbehave. Many times, and especially we need to understand this in our time. Sabar, not only when they misbehave, sabar when they are behaving too good. So they want to be good. Your daughter will come and sit in your lap and want to play with your father. Your daughter will come and sit in your lap. She wants to play with you. She's going to play with you. You don't have a beard, gentlemen. So she's going to play with your hair. You have beard, you have to give them something to play with. And now, you, are not, you don't have time for it. You don't have time for your children. And this is when the person is getting annoyed. Your child is playing with you. You are getting annoyed with your child. We don't let alone having sabr on their misbehavior. We don't even have sabr on their love. When they want us. When they need us. We don't have sabr for them. sabr What is And the person will provide them with proper clothing according to his capacity. And this is something also that we need to do. Don't always consider this, you know, for myself, buying the best clothing is part of my life. Because I go to work, because I... And for my children, don't need it. They just play this one and next day it's going to be dirty. So buy them the dirtiest one. I'm not saying brand names. That's a spoiling. That has no benefit. But I'm saying something that they like. Something that will be good. Oh, you like this? This one. You have the one? Here. Here. This way. This is also to please them through things that these type of things. Kunna lahu hijaban min al Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There will be a protection for him from the hand. In other hadith, narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ تُدْرِكُهُ إِبْنَتَانِ فَيُحْسِنُ صُحْبَتَهُمَا إِلَّا أَدْخَلَتَاهُ الْجَنَّةَ Any person has two daughters, in that one there was three daughters. Now Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making it even easier. A person who has two daughters, فَيُحْسِنُ صُحْبَتَهُمَا Look at the rules. Look at the condition. He takes good care of them. He takes 
good care of his daughters. In a lot of tradition, until this day, if you don't have boys and you have only daughters, people don't like it. And they always ask. And personally, I experienced this. Every time I had a daughter, people would say, oh, Inshallah, may Allah give you a boy. And I would any and this was something, I'm telling you, when I had my daughter, at that time, whoever used to tell me this, I used to hold them right there. I said, why did you make that vow? Why did you make that What's wrong with that? And when I had my second one, a lot of people made that girl. Third one, a lot of people made that girl. But I always used to stop them. I stop them means wrong. Why do you make dua that Allah gives you another child? Why specify your son? Yes, of course. Having some boys, some girls, it's good. But I understand the culture that these people are coming from and the reason they are making that dua. Because they consider that, oh, May Allah give you something to do right next time. Sorry for you. Read, this is what it means. I feel sorry for you. Although they don't say it. And this is why they make that dua. So when I had the third one, at that time, whenever, whoever made that dua, I gave me that dua, may Allah give you. Boys now, I used to know, I need a dua for other girls. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for girls. Having that one will fulfill that sunnah, although it's not my control. But if Allah will give me that, it will be a blessing of Allah. This is what Allah chose for His son, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He takes good care of them. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, These girls will take him to paradise. They will take him to Jannah. They will take him. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana lahu thalathu banat, a person who has three daughters, yu'wihinna, he gives them proper shelter, proper residence, proper protection, wa yakfihinna, he takes care of all of their needs, wa yarhamuhunna, and he has mercy on them. فَقَدْ وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ الْبَتَّةِ Jannah is guaranteed for this person. It's just like, it seems like we're talking about someone who's fasting for his whole life and he's like giving charity with all of his wealth and he's praying in the Masajid all the time. This is the reward for what? For having, raising three daughters, يُؤْوِيهِنَّ Protecting them, providing them with proper shelter, yakfi hinna, taking care of them, and yarham hunna, having mercy on them. Look at the wordings that are being used here. So a person asked Ya Rasulullah, how about if someone has only two daughters? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, within ta'in, you will get the reward even for two daughters. After hearing these ahadiths, who would not wish to have daughters? And those who have daughters, those who will get daughters, after we know this, how much we would be pleased to have them and we will take care of good, we'll take good care of them and have mercy on them, have take care of their needs because these are our doors of Jannah. SubhanAllah, until now we used to read that mothers are doors of Jannah. Yes, surely. Jannah is under the feet of the mother, but Jannah is the first. Take care of your daughters. That's your daughter of the Jannah too. And now look at it. SubhanAllah. When people say Islam, women, rights of women in Islam, a person who will look at these ahadiths will never raise that flag of rights of women in Islam. In fact, they will say, we want 
the right of women the way Islam gives it to them. We want what Islam is giving them. Any person that will read these hadiths, how his view would change about having daughters, about raising daughters, and every time you're upset, she did something wrong, and you will remember, my prophet told me, Ya that if I have mercy on them, my daughter, Allah will grant me Jannah. Sabar alayhim, she's giving me a little hard time. My prophet told me, if I have sabar with her, I have patience with her, she is my Jannah. You may remember the story of Malik ibn Dina, rahmatullahi alayhi. The person who is well known, very well known, great, pious scholar of Islam, known for his ibadah. Initially, as he himself narrates, that he was a police officer who was spending totally different lifestyle, living a different lifestyle, drinking, robbery, zulm, wronging people, taking people's properties, wherever he has power, misusing the power, that was a common thing in his life. Allah blessed him with a daughter. She was still young. And he used to drink alcohol around her. So whenever she would see him drinking, she used to take the bottle away and throw it away. Out of love for his daughter, he wouldn't tell her anything. Every time she saw him with the bottle of alcohol, she would take it and throw it away. After some time, she passed away. One day, he saw her in his dream. And he sees in the dream that it's the day of Qiyamah and there is Jannah and Jahannam there. And he sees a big snake running after him. So he says, I started running towards one direction when I saw a hill. I said, let me go on top of the hill. Maybe I'll find a place of protection over there. And I started running in that direction. And the snake is falling. By the time I got on top of the hill, <coughs> the snake was very close. So I looked at the other side of the hill and it was Jahannam. I turned around and started running down. On my way, I saw an old man. I requested the old man to help me. He said, listen, you can see me, it's my situation. I'm so old. I can't help you. But I can direct you to where you may be able to get some help. Go on top of that hill that you see over there with the castle on top of it. Go there. Maybe you can find some help over there. So he ran towards that direction there. And now he says, as I get close to the castle, that snake is close to me now. Is about to get me and people are standing. I saw a lot of children there. And they all started calling each other. Come on, come on, let's see, let's see if anyone can help this man. And many of them, they would come out, look at me and they would go back. No, we can't help you. He says, finally I saw my daughter. She came right running to me. She grabbed me as they used to. She used to grab me when she was alive. When she used to play with me. And then she went to the snake and she turned the snake into gold. And she told me, Daddy, how long are you going to continue living this life? How long are you going to disobey the law? She says, I asked her, daughter, what is happening? Why was the snake following you? She said, the snake is your deeds, it's not a snake. These are your bad deeds, your wrong deeds. All the sins that you have committed, they take the shape of a snake over here. She said, who was that old man? She said, that was those were your good deeds. They're too weak to help you, but at least they guide you. At 
least they guided him. We may have some good deeds that will allow us to come to the masjid, that will allow us one day to read Quran, that will allow us one day to remember Allah, to be connected to the deen of Allah. We never go to the masjid. Every small deed could guide us at some point. And then he woke up. This was the turning point of his life. Doors, protection against Jahannam. See, this is what we are reading here in the hadith. His daughter is the one who really changed him, even after she passed away. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to appreciate this great name of Allah of having our daughters and we raise them properly according to instructions given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the teachings of our deen. In fact, we make them the true Muslimah, the true believing women of Islam. Remember one thing, all the great scholars of Islam were gifts given to us by the mothers of Islam. And those mothers were raised by their parents to be those kind of mothers. So this is what a family is. Parents are raising a daughter. This girl will raise people like Imam Malik, like Imam Shafi, like Imam Abu Hanifa, like Imam Bukhari, like Imam Ghazali, like Imam Nawawi. And these names that I have mentioned, this is not just trying to mention some names out of cloth. This, these are the scholars that were raised by their mothers. They were raised by their mothers. Those were gifts given to the Ummah by their mothers. This is what we give the Ummah by raising these daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our daughters to be of those pious people. To be the true followers of the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ummah ato al-Muhim wa sallallahu ta'ala wa khayi khalqi Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Mawla ya salli wa sallim